Hello and welcome to episode one of the Boot Nerds Podcast. Guys? What's up, guys? Finally this happening. Is all, this, is, this is like an overseas connection, and this is basically the, the, the combination we've all wanted to see for like, I don't know how long. <laughs> but yeah, thanks no, for having me, dude. Thanks for no, having me. Something I've wanted to do for a while. And when I couldn't get the guy I wanted in the first place, I thought you were going to be the next best option. So, <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, the second guy also said no, and then you came to me. So, um, so basically, yeah, it's, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> you couldn't get a phone call out to New Zealand, so uh, yeah, you came to me. <laughs> <laughs> Be- better than nothing. Better than better nothing. Better than nothing. Sure. Yeah, that, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. So, but I guess uh, you you said you wanted to talk about all the recent stuff that's been going on, and and I figured, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, no, there's been, I mean, it's been pretty, what, two weeks into 2019 and we've got Uh new Nike models, new Puma models. I just saw on Instagram right before we got on, New Balance is going to announce something new tomorrow. They have like a countdown timer going. Yep. Uh, Adidas just launched the Predator and and Copa right before the end of the year. It's been been a hectic couple of weeks. Man, and and, you know, but, but this is like, you know, usually Christmas is at the end of December. For me... I guess for you as well. Like, like this is this is Christmas for us, right? This is this is this is good stuff. I mean, we have a new. Yeah, future. no, it's it's exciting. We have, we have a new future. We have a new uh, a new a, f- a brand new silo from Nike, which kind of mm-hmm. is just a continuation of the hype of Like, uh, what, what, but what do you think? Like, just right off the bat here, what what what's your take on all the new stuff? What what has you most excited, and what are you more like? Eh, about? Uh, uh, okay, well, here's the thing. You've tried both the new Phantom Venom uh-huh. and the new Future 19.1. Uh-huh. I have not. I've pretty much just seen pictures at this point. Hoping oh, to have oh, them this week. <laughs> but, like, the Future 2.1, even the Future 18.1, not that there was much of a difference between them, they've been, like, two of my, I would say, go-tos when I'm not testing stuff out since they came out. Like, I've really, really uh-huh. liked those. So I'm super uh-huh. excited about the 19.1. But at the same time, like... When Nike killed the T90 line, they, they killed me a little bit. That was like, oh, that yeah, was my go-to it. model throughout my entire childhood. Was it the so, Laser 2? That was one of your favorite boots of all time? Uh, I had Laser 1s. I had Laser 2s. I had Laser yeah. 3. I had every laser. Like every laser growing up, that was like the, sh- the so one I, but I was line that really- I stuck to. Yeah, I was never really sold on. I, I really like the laser ones. I've always been a, a, a total ninety fan ever since the Assume total nineties um, back in the day. But I never really like took to the laser because for me it was a little bit too white, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But but it, it was a good boot. But I think it just ran out of time, so to speak. Uh, like the times changed, and and the laser well, had to change too. But apparently, yeah, I, yeah. you know, it, uh, it's just like with fashion, right? Everything comes in waves. Uh, and apparently the, the laser wave and the, the whole strike zone wave is coming back, I guess. It, it, that's what it seems like. But yeah, it's, it's what old is, what's, what is, oh my gosh, what's old <laughs> is new again. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I think Nike did the right thing in killing the T90 line in the first place. Uh-huh. Cause well, it, let's be honest. To be fair, the, the Laser 4, the Laser 4 yeah. was, I think, probably the most uninspired of all the T90 models ever to come I out. I agree, yeah. It was, it was a subtle evolution on the Laser 3 that was a pretty extreme design that was probably uh-huh. too extreme. I think they went but a little bit too far I, with I, that. I, it was too tank-like, right? It, it, was, it was too much. But, mm-hmm. but, but then they replaced it with the Hypervenom ones. And it, which is, in my opinion, one of the best Nike boots we've seen the last yeah, 10 years. Yeah, I, I think that goes down. That goes down in history as one of Nike's best ever football boots, period. Uh-huh. I, I don't, as flawed totally. as it was, because it wasn't, it had its problems. <laughs> oh, but, I did. I mean, <laughs> the there was, there was something. Do you remember I, the rollover? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. no like, lockdown whatsoever. Well, it, no, the, the thing about it is like you put them on and they felt great for like, what, uh, absolutely. 10 sessions? And then yeah. they stretched to like, a mile yeah, long. They in were terms unrecognizable. Of it was, yeah, it was bad. It was. It was. A mix, I, you know what I think it was? I think it was the sole plate was a little bit too stiff for how soft that upper was. Probably. So you were yeah. constant. You were constantly like fighting the stiffness of the sole plate, which would uh-huh. stretch the upper more than it needed to. That the exactly. only other and boot it, that I've ever worn that overstretched like that that I can remember, and I love the boot. I went through several pairs. Was the the first time Puma did the King SL. Yeah, I remember it was that. The, it was the finale one at the time. The, with finale, the regular yeah. king. And that was the black the and red SL. one, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I love those. That was those. a great boot, great boot. I still have but, it somewhere. Um, but they overstretched so quickly. Oh, it was ridiculous. Even with my slim feet, and I have very slim feet, they overstretch, and that's something. Um, mm -hmm. But um, but yeah. But I mean, if we go back to the boots here, uh, the, the new futures, um, if you haven't tried them yet, you're, you're kind of missing, because this is a good boot. I mean, it's not one of those boots that are going to, you know, change your life if you have tried the, the 18.1s and the 2.1s. Uh, is it really it just that gives you, It still feels similar, right? Eh? It feels similar, but then, you know, it's more, I would say, streamlined. It's more sleek. You know, the whole sock, uh, even on its sock here, is, uh, uh -huh. is, it's, it's, it's tied around the ankle. So, so you know, it, it feels more streamlined. Obviously, the, the net fit is gone. Now it could be called hole fit because mm -hmm. there are holes. Yeah. yeah, there's no more net. But I think yeah. the net was the one thing people were afraid of. Exactly. And, and now actually, okay, you can also still rip a hole in the hole. Or you can rip an even bigger hole, but, but they mm -hmm. feel pretty sturdy. And the thing is that now you only have uh, the knit. It's been coated a little bit on the, on the front here. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's basically raised knit, so it's, it's, it's hollow on the inside. But, but you don't really feel mm -hmm. the, 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 the texture on your foot because you have this membrane on the inside, the blue stuff. So it just feels ridiculously soft. And even though... That's um, a, that's what I was really curious about. The blue is it just like a neoprene material, uh, or is it I something different? It, it feels it feels like a neoprene, uh, like mesh, like a uh, like slightly. Oh, so it's, it's more of a material. mesh rather than a spongy material. I would I would call it spongy. Yeah, that's yeah. that's probably the right way to say it. And 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 it's basically waterproof, which is good. But but you just feel the the softness around your foot. And and once you spend like I would say two hours with it, it it softens up really well. It is a little stiff at first, but I mean yeah. But it's just a nice, honestly, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice overall experience. That, and, and again, it's not, it's not going to change your life. It's nothing revolutionary. It's just a good evolution, if you will. If you know what I mean. Yeah, because that's, that's what I was worried about. Like I, the future 2.1 and the 18.1 were so good. I was worried that it was going to be a change, kind of like when we went to Hypervenom Phantom 1 to Phantom 2, which was, yeah. <laughs> let's face it, that was a disaster. They had to backtrack on that one later on. But so that's what I, I didn't want them to like ruin the initial formula that made the future so great. Hyper Venom too, man. That was something else. But I agree. I agree. And they and they didn't. I mean, you know, looks wise, I'm not a hundred percent sure this is like maybe I'm too old for it. But uh, but I like it. I like it. I, I like um, the one. I like the way it looks. I don't have any issues with it. I always thought the future was good. Honestly, I think Puma's boots in general. There aren't too many that I think don't look good. I nah. think the form stripe in general, I know they all look similar because of the form stripe, but to me, that's a but clean design. Think about the 119.1. One. No, that colorway looks new awesome. Pack. It is it looks really ridiculously good. awesome. I, I, I'm, I'm really feeling that. Honestly, really, really feeling that. Um, and I just think the new, you know, again, colors, you know, bright red and or crimson, whatever they decide to call this, and this blue is perhaps a little bit too much for me, but I can definitely see some potential in this colorway, you know what I mean? Well, you know what? I think I think it's very important for the the launch. It's almost as important these days for the launch color to be right rather than the boot to be right. Oh like, yeah, yeah I, I, I I'd say especially it's equal for Puma, parts. right? Yeah, especially for Puma. Because if you look at the Copa, the new Copa, the, the uh -huh. nineteen plus, uh -huh. it's an excellent boot. You could say it's a little strange looking. Fantastic, yeah. But yeah, yeah. The, I think the launch color really. <laughs> I've hurt, seen the memes. I've that. seen the memes. You are oh, you. Were, you have been rough on it, man. You have been so rough on it. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's not my fault. <laughs> but Adding have you seen? Like, I have the Architect Pack one right here. Yeah. And it, it's it, beautiful. It's, a it's beautiful. I gotta different, say, Like oh. this looks amazing in comparison oh. to the white ones. Like even this blue on the sole plate, but the full blackout. I, I just it's, think it was a mistake to launch it not in black. But do you do you like think that just, a black Copa would have would have gotten the traction that the white one would? Because you wouldn't see it in the same way on foot, and you know, it wouldn't get the same visibility, right? Well, I don't I don't know that black or white would have been. I think honestly, maybe a brighter color would have been good. The thing that's tricky about it is you got. You have a line like the Copa that's really geared towards uh -huh. somebody who's going to want an old school boot. So they're going to gravitate, I think, towards white or black, typically. Yeah, yeah. Black being probably the easier of the two because people don't want their boots to get dirty, which it's inevitable exactly. when the boots are white. Exactly. And, and I think what they tried to do with this design is try to make it more modern and more, 
I guess appealing to kids because kids are ultimately buying the majority of these boots. But well, I let's don't be honest, think this is what they're for, right? This is to bring the 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 2019 kid uh, back yeah. into the Copa. I just I think it's, I think know, it, it was always a, it was always going to be I don't want to say impossible, but a really difficult task to try and make a kangaroo leather boot appeal to a 13 year old. But I think they have, honestly. I think like, they have to this, a certain extent. Yeah. No, it looks. But, it well, looks I mean, what, how how could you make this? Let, let, let's spin it like this. How would you make the Copa 19 Plus more appealing? Other than, should we say, making it uh, uh, electricity yellow, how would you make it more appealing to the 13-year-old than than a laceless, you know, super sleek-looking monster boot? I, uh, I'm just curious. Cause, no, cause, I, I I don't have an answer to that. That's that's I think that's a million-dollar question right there. And that's my friend. Why we are reviewers and not yeah. <laughs> <boot> creators. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like an interesting question with the Copa because, you know, the reception was really good. Uh-huh. And I just, you know, for me, it was one of the best boots of 2018. Uh, for sure. I would actually rank it with, with some of the best boots I've ever tried. Uh-huh. Because for me, it just had everything apart from the weight. But, but you know, you can't have your cake and eat it, I guess. It's just mm-hmm. it's just one of them boots that, that really gives you something extra that you don't get in any other boot. And, and that's okay. what I really appreciate it for. It's special. Because I, I can't talk about this with too many people, which is why you were great to have on this podcast. But you've legitimately tried everything, as have I. And uh-huh. I think you'll agree with me in saying that 95% of the boots that you try, it's like, ah, I've been there, done that. There's nothing... There's something exactly, unique yeah. about it, but there's nothing uh-huh. that I haven't seen before or tried exactly, before or yeah. felt before. Well, the Copa 19 uh-huh. Plus is legitimately like, I've never worn or felt anything like it. It's it's its own unique it's, first time ever type thing. And that's hard to do considering how many things have been done in the, in the football boot industry at this point. And that's what I mean. The second you step into it, even when you get it in hand, you just know, okay, this is something special, right? Yeah. And, and the second you just step into it, you feel the snugness, but, the, you know, the snugness of the fit is still comfortable. Yeah. And, and then you go and play in it, and, and it actually performs. The lockdown is, I would say, decent for a, for a laceless boot. It, it just gives you something that, you know, even going down to the 19.1 is nowhere near the 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 unique feeling you get in the 19 plus and and that's something i really appreciate it for because mm-hmm. it can't compete obviously let's say that take the the wave cup legends um mm-hmm. it, it can't really compete with that for like old school og leather sensation but but it's something else and, and yeah, that for me is really well that's why it's hard to criticize it's like i would have i think i think the criticism more comes into play like i wish people received it a little bit better than they perhaps did just because of how true, good it is. True. Yeah. Because, because again, it's so rare for something to come out to be this unique and actually I good know. at the same time. But but was the Copa like, and I don't know what I feel myself, but was the Copa ahead of its time? Do you know what I mean? Like, like <sighs> is, it, is, it, is it a year too early? I don't, I mean, people, I don't think people so. people ready for it? I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think people expected it. Cause I remember, do you remember uh-huh. seeing the early spy shots of Dybala wearing the blackouts yep. in training? Yeah, I remember. And they looked uh-huh. like, they looked like slippers. And I oh, thought, I, I saw the pictures on Instagram. Everyone sends them to me. I'm sure they get sent to you as well. And I'm like, uh-huh. there's no way that's going to be the next thing they come out with. It's, it's no. just, there's no way it does it. It's, it's so out there. It's so different than anything that we've seen before, but sure uh-huh. enough, it, it Honestly, what we saw then is pretty much what we see right here. Like they- the funny thing is that back then he wore black socks, so people couldn't really see the, the you know the split between the boot and and the sock. Yeah, and and I'd seen the boot at that point, so I kind of knew what it was. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, so it, it was fun to see people people's reaction who didn't know what to expect and what it was. Um, that that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But I love the cop, and I think you know this. It's just, you know, this purple, bluish, oily looking outsole is just fantastic. In, in general, the whole Arctic pack is just, and it's a funny name, Arctic. It's not Architect, it's not Arctic, is, it's Ar- Arctic. Is it really? Whatever they call them. I think so. I haven't, been, I, 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 haven't been, I haven't been paying attention. <laughs> Arctic, Ar- architect, whatever. It's oh. it's a it's a cool pack. It's a cool name. Uh, they can basically call it whatever they want when it looks this cool. Look at this Darth Vader Predator. Come on. The pros aren't uh. going to be wearing these ones. I don't think. I think this is just no. For the they public. won't be. 
Yeah, this is yeah, just exactly. It's basically for the guys who think that that you know the the red predator and whatever's going to come out uh, is a little bit too out there. Then they can oh, go and get. Oh, that, oh speaking like of was. speaking of predator, can you uh -huh. imagine if the, if they did, if this came out as the predator nineteen plus? Okay, okay, that I guess that's the argument. If this was the if this was the new predator rather than the new Copa, do you think uh -huh. the response would have been different? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I actually think. You know, I, I know think, I think people would have received it better had it been a predator. Probably, yeah. But then again, uh, it doesn't have any rubber elements, and and that's kind of it. It's it's a very elegant jump to this because yeah. I've, I've seen so many comments like on the, that the new Venom mm -hmm. is more predator than the Predator. So I think if they made the copper with uh, rubber fins. Mm -hmm and release this, I mean, maybe it would have been easier for people to accept that this was the new Predator. I like the Predator 19. I, I, I do. Uh -huh. And I think it's, it's, an, it's an okay, you know, attempt at what a Predator could look like in 2019, what people want. But mm -hmm. I still see the people who want the rubber zones. I don't know what you feel about it. I, I think it's tricky because I think, I think the people that are screaming for the return of power boots are a vocal minority, if I'm being uh -huh. honest. Because, uh -huh. yeah. like, they've been gone for... What? Hyper Venom Phantom 1. I think the Laser 4 was pretty much the last holdout for... Uh, uh, oh, no, the technically it would have been, it been Predator, Predator Instinct was like the last, because that was 14, ran until yes. 15. Yeah, true. And then they killed it. So the Predator... Yeah. But at that point, they weren't even really marketing it as a power boot, I wouldn't say. I think the true. Laser 4 was probably the last true power yeah, boot. Yeah, I would say I would say 13 when the Hyper Venom came and, and you know, uh, so I think that's, it was 11 or 12 when the yeah. Laser 4 came. I don't remember. That's, that's bad. That's six years. Yeah. Like, I was a teenager at that point still. But but uh, I, I guess power boots are still dead, right? They're just now being labeled as control boots because you still get the elements. You get the grip, you get the swerve, but... But I mean, it's the same thing with the Venom. Is this a power boot? I probably yeah. wouldn't say. But but not not to feel not to make us feel old. But like think about it. if you're 16 years old or younger, you probably have never tried a like a, a dare I say real Predator. You've never tried a T90. You've never tried yeah. any boot with any kind of rubber striking elements. Period. Uh -huh. I know. So like what the you mean. power boot thing. Like that's what's going to be interesting. Like we we talk about the Predator not being what the Predator used to be. Yeah, this new Phantom Venom old, right? is going to be the test of whether or not this is actually what people want. Yes. Because Nike is I, bringing I, it back. Because this is basically, this has to be the first time that should we say the, the second generation of, of boot aficionados, they will really get to try uh, what it's like to have a boot with fins on it, right? Yeah, and, it, and, and granted, I've not tried the boots, but it looks... It looks a lot more sleek. It looks lighter. It's it's not it's not what a T90 was. T90s were just tanks on your feet, oh, basically. Yeah. If you keep talking, I'm just gonna go get the boots real quick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. So there's uh, what I'm so curious to see with the Phantom Venom, and I've been I've actually been a little bit, I guess, surprised by the reaction. It seems to be very 50 50 on on people that really like it. And people that really don't like it at all. And I'm I'm curious, I was surprised by how many people were of the opinion, I can't believe they're killing off the Hypervenom for this. Because uh -huh. I think if you look at the shape of the boot, it's pretty much Hypervenom Phantom 3 low. There's, it is Hypervenom. There, there's it's, no it's like, honestly it's it's the same. It's that it's, base it's, that base formula is still there. Like just like when, when Nike came out with the Phantom Vision, uh -huh. instead of it being the Magista Obra 3. I think this easily could have been the Hyper Venom Phantom 4, and the for boot me, wouldn't have been any it's, different. It's honestly, it's just a rename. Uh, for yeah. me, it's, it's just like this feels like the natural progression of what Hyper Venom would have been. But I think Nike realized that after the Magis Over 2, which mm -hmm. in my opinion was a bit of a train wreck, they needed a reset of some sort. Like they couldn't yeah. keep on with the Magista line. And then, you know, trimming down the whole uh, uh, silo, so they now have Phantom and they have Mercurial, it's going to make the whole marketing aspect. A lot easier to understand. I, so I think it's, Phantom. it's it's become the market's become. It's been easier to build hype around a brand new name and a new yeah. boot rather than yes. just a new boot. I, I, I think, like, I think aside from Mercurial, any other line right now, maybe Predator, maybe Copa. I mm -hmm. think every other line come the next model 
the name is it could be anything it, it doesn't matter at this point uh, true true but but let's look at it this way nike now have phantom right which is mm -hmm. the whole creator uh finisher whatever silo and then they have mercurial which is all about speed it's like a very it's a very strong simple message that they have to send for the two silos and i think in that respect it was pretty genius uh -huh. Um, but, but for me, the Venom is still, it's still a hyper Venom, but it's a good boot. I mean, um, as, as I'm saying in my review, um, it's basically, it, it doesn't knock me back over how, you know, w wicked or, you know, unexpectedly innovative or whatever it is, mm -hmm. but it's just a great boot. And, and I actually think after playing in it for a while that I'm going to go out of the material and go into this as yeah. my, like one of my daily drivers. Yeah, honestly. I, I just, I like the fact that it's it's something different because I think what Nike has always done well, and even, even still, even before this Phantom Venom, I think they've had good variety from line to line uh -huh. where Adidas at one point, not I'd say right now their variety is pretty good, but at one point everything had a sprint frame and everything had similarity from line to line. There wasn't a lot of, as much variety, I, I would yeah. say. Yeah, yeah. Where... This is something not just that we haven't seen from Nike in a long time. We really don't have, you don't have another option for this style of boot from anyone right now. True. Which, but the funny I thing like. is that, <laughs> the funny thing is that it's basically going back to the roots of like, say, Laser 4, right? And, yeah. and, and the Hyper Venom being low cut and having like a, a textured forefoot and, and striking elements. It's, 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 it's interesting that at this point in time, something that we recognize as old and not very innovative is being seen as the new direction to go because knit and, and colored boots has been, it's been a part of the market for so long now that, you know, actually making a, a, a dedicated low cut boot is, is a big move. Yeah. It's kind of interesting, I, right? I think, I think what's, what's also really interesting, I, I, I read the press release and the press releases are always, they can be funny. Mm -hmm. as far as like claims go i thought it was very interesting that they were they specifically said and and this is something i've never ever seen claimed i've seen power boots claim more power more swerve whatever but uh -huh. they claim that their striking element would correct a bad mishit shot and keep it low basically saying that you can't you can't sky the ball with those <laughs> shoes on which let me, let I, me just... I can't wait to test i can't wait to test that out Dude, I mean, I'm, I'm I mean obviously, proof I don't already. believe it. <laughs> Living yeah. proof that you can definitely. I, I just thought ball. that was a Nike's made bold claims before. That was bold. I yeah. I like. I mean, what, I don't have a problem with it. And if you want to believe, it's that, a fantastic hey. boot. But that is one of the biggest rubbish claims I've ever read. Too. I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's you just got to be bad enough and then it's very easy to scout. <laughs> but with that said, with that said, so, you know, the striking fins are nice. Uh -huh. They're not going to make turn you into Marcus Rashford, but they give that nice, you know, clean striking surface. I don't know if you guys can see it here on the, uh -oh. on the, on the camera. I seem to have lost connection to Jay. Oh, damn it. Poor but when connection. you bend your foot, right? Uh... The, the, Welcome to episode amazing. one of the Boot Nerds podcast, everyone. This is going We're great tech so nerds, far. clearly. Brilliant tech nerds right here. We only do well for uh -oh. tech with boots, apparently. Can you hear me? Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, great. I'm just going to keep talking because because the deal is that with the with the Venoms, you get you get the fins, so you get the clean striking surface. And just like on the adaptive shield on the Laser 4, you actually have a, a, a striking surface that stays... Uh, flat, <laughs> relatively flat when you shoot. So, so that's pretty good. Um, and then you have the the toe box. And I don't know if Josh can hear me again. I, I got you back. I got you back. Oh, I lost you for I'm, thirty seconds. I'm just talking about the strike zone and the, especially uh -huh. the the toe box, dude. The toe box is. I don't know if you can see, but it is ridiculously soft. Is it? it so the whole the whole boot is a flyknit base because that's yeah, something that wasn't base. super clear in the press release. I know it says flyknit physically on the toe. Yeah, yeah. But the texturing, but, the texturing varying from the midfoot to the toe is is kind of unusual for a flying it up. But we never really yes. seen that. Yes, and and basically it seems it has this light, uh, slightly uh, matte, waxy, sticky coating to it uh, on on the on the forefoot with this like honeycomb like texture, which is probably why it reminds a lot of people of the first Hyper Venom. Yeah. Um, but but then you know it has the flying it uh, lace cover. It has flying it through the midfoot, which basically has these flywire, brio cables, whatever they decide to call it nowadays, uh, cables engineered into the upper. Mm -hmm. So you have some firm cables that are kind of like stuck to the upper, they can't move, and then you have these dynamic cables mm -hmm. that can move and adapt to, to how tight you tie your laces. Uh, new heel counter, obviously, also flying it on the outside, uh, some sort of PU, I guess, TPU uh, counter, a lot of foam. Mm -hmm. 
It's it's not rocket science, but it just works. Yeah, no, I, I don't think they needed. I like the fact that they didn't try to reinvent the wheel again because they 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 kind of did that with the Phantom Vision. There, there's uh-huh. that's uh-huh. another boot like the Copa 19 Plus, where it's like so many things that have never really been done. Like I guess Puma kind of did that with the Evo Touch. It's you could look at it and say it's kind of Phantom yes. Vision esque in terms of the uh-huh. construction, but the yep. feel and and way that it was executed, even with the materials. Totally different. I feel you, yeah. Which boot was it that had the, um, that was also the legend. They have, it, it's kind of a, you know, the same with uh, uh, quad fit. It's the same as the, the stretchy mesh underneath the leather on the legend, right? It's kind of, you know, they kind yeah, of tried the concept a little bit before, you know, keeping uh-huh. your foot on, in, in place. But but I'm, I'm, I'm with you that, well, we had the future as well. That was rather, that was rather different when it came and, and, and still is, I mean, I, I still think to this day that the future is one of the most, uh, it has the most unique USP out there, if you know what I mean. Like it's mm-hmm. it's not laceless. You shouldn't go laceless on your future. I think we both agree on that. <laughs> we see people do. You're, I don't you understand. Know what? It's, what? Not, it's not terrible. It's, I, no, you I did tried it with it, right? the 18.1. The 18.1, uh-huh. but I felt like the 18.1 had the tightest fit. The 2.1, they upped the volume a little bit. And I, Agreed, yeah. It wouldn't but be I think you'll find that this this is tighter. Okay. So I, I mean, it can be done, but I tried it when I reviewed it in Marseille, and it was, it, it was, it was okay. But I would never, ever, ever wear it for a match. And and I have a tight fit. You know, my true size is like spot on, and I, yeah. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. No. Nah. You know, you know what it is with the whole laceless thing. I think we grew up when the Mercurials first kind of hit the scene, uh-huh. and it was like. It was something so different and so cool to put on a pair of boots that wrapped your foot so tightly in comparison yeah. to the, the Predator Manias, the Copa Mundials, the uh-huh. bulky Tina. Like everything was so big, high volume and wide so, at that so point. So you think the Mercurial destroyed us? <laughs> no. Well, well, because then the Mercurial came out and it was like, it was so like, oh my gosh, it fits so tight to my foot. It's so responsive. Uh-huh. It's that... It's that sensation that you pretty much look for in every single boot after you try to mercurial. Yes. So yes. then, then when the whole laceless thing kind of came onto the scene, and and it's like, ah, it it fits on my foot. It doesn't fall off, but it doesn't necessarily have that feel that I like or that I that I'm used to at this point. And and let's be honest, you know, uh-huh. if the pros like it, Marco Royce has gone laceless, and Altovic has gone laceless. A couple of other people, which whose yeah. names I don't Griezmann remember. Griezmann doesn't so even tie. He doesn't even tie his shoes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange. Doesn't give, Griezmann doesn't care. Like he's his own person, and that's, do, but that's, that's fantastic. You, like, come on, you're playing. You're playing in La Liga for Atletico Madrid against some of the best players in the world, and you don't tie your shoes. You're too good. If if you that's, can play against the best, then you're just too good. That's wild. I mean, I used to I, I used to play with a guy my... who he'd warm up, never tie his shoes in the warm up, and uh-huh. even for tr- the training, like I swear he'd go through full training sessions and not tie his shoes. And he was yeah, probably really Ridiculous, really right, probably the most skilled player on the team. And I I, I could never like, I'm like I always ask him like how do you do that? Yo, like, Josh, I just couldn't it, do it. We're just we're not good enough, man. We just gotta <laughs> face the fact. <laughs> if you can't wear the future laceless and actually perform, you're not good enough. Yeah, that, that's just the, <laughs> so. That's is is that the ultimate test? Like, can you go out wear the future laceless and then perform? I don't recommend it. As I said, in my review, uh-huh. it's like buying a Ferrari to go and get milk in the store. It's like you you buy a boot for the you know to get net fit. You want net fit. That's why you want to buy it, right? Uh-huh. And then you don't use it. It's like <laughs> but you know what I. I I, I mean, the pros are going to do what the pros are going to do, and obviously they have a lot of influence. Sure, sure. But I think I think Puma has or Puma does that. I think it's people, actually Puma because they're German, right? It's like I, I mean, it's, it's not know. it's not Adidas. It's it's Adidas. Adidas people, and Puma. People really get on me for the whole not saying Puma, but and that's I'm because just, you're 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 Canadian and and American. I die. Yeah, it's whatever. Uh, but but you say Nike the right way. Yeah, that's I am saying Nike the right way, even and though it, even like, though it's bike and not. Bikey, yeah, it's, as, it's as people weird. love to point out, but I don't know that the grammar rules technically apply to names. I'm not sure that they do. I have no, but it's it's named after the Greek goddess of sport. I think yeah. some Greek goddess at least, and she is called Nike. But we Europeans, we have a really hard time pronouncing Nike the right way. Everyone I know who's not completely boot savvy say they say Nike. Yeah, which it's whatever. I mean, it doesn't bother me. I don't know why people get on the internet and get so mad about nah. slight mispronunciation. It's the, it's the internet, man. It's beautiful. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> back back to Puma, as Puma? Uh, 
As, <laughs> you got I think, to say right, dude. Yeah, I think they've dropped the ball in the marketing of the future. When they first launched it, it uh-huh. was such an emphasis on like creating these custom lacing systems. And yep. They did these wild ones and hey, they look cool, whatever. They work. I don't think it's the best way of actually lacing them up. But I after agree. basically the first colorway or two, they kind of just stopped marketing the whole NetFit thing. Which, and that's the thing, you know, after after the first, you know, when a new boot is launched and they, they talk about all the tech uh, features and all the benefits and, oh, look what this boot can do and you have to focus on this, this and that. And after that, it's basically just storytelling for the mm-hmm. new colorway, if there yeah. even is storytelling around that pack. And that's, you know... You know, and I've been in Unisport for so many years that, you know, I've, I've seen it all uh, when, when it comes to boot launches. And, and it just weirds me out that the brands don't focus more on, like, actually telling about the tech benefits every single time they launch a boot. Yeah. Because there's, there's so much unique stuff to talk about. I always thought, when that, when that came out, I thought it was going to be the coolest thing. And I thought for sure, 100%, they were going to do it. That you'd get a guy like Griezmann and you'd get Royce and you get all these big name pros that they have wearing that future. And uh-huh. have them like do a mini 30 second tutorial on Instagram on the specific lacing setup that they use. It would have made so much sense. I completely agree. So, like I got even even if it wasn't real and they didn't wear it in a game and I could see that, yeah. I would still think it was cool and it would still be like I don't the, get influenced by that kind of thing, but I, I'd be so into that. The funny thing is, back back when they launched the Future 18.1 and Griezmann actually tied his laces, uh, uh-huh. those were the days, yeah. he wore the standard lacing setup which I found hilarious. Like you have this amazing opportunity to get a perfect customized fit and then you wear the standard uh, lace. But they, I, just, I don't think I've seen a single pro with a custom setup. No, no. Uh, honestly, I, like I don't it. think I, I have. I, I can't wear my futures without going, you know, I know exactly what I want these days. And yeah, I, I feel I feel I, the need to do it. But but listen, not everyone is like us because we obsess sure. like over the smallest details. Uh, you yeah. know, your yeah, podcast I feel, is- I think the people that are going to watch this will understand. Probably, yeah. Hopefully, because uh, otherwise you're missing out, guys. Honestly, you're missing yeah. out. Yeah. So, okay. So, but I mean, we could ramble on forever, but I think in, in order to have something to talk about uh, in the future, maybe yeah. we should try and round it off and, and oh, like- that was, uh, that was a good one, bud. That was a good one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you managed to weave in two puns in that. I love it. Um, before we get too hyper here, no, we can't say that. That's dead. Um yeah, oh, I've got, good. I've got nothing. I've got no. But, but which is the like, which, you know, release here are you the most hyped about? Now that you can't be hyped about the <sighs> Phantom Venom anymore. Oh. You know what? I, I, I want to say Phantom Venom, but uh huh. I already know. I already. I'm uh-huh. gonna like them. I can probably tell you, I'm already gonna like uh-huh. them. But it's not gonna be the bulky T90 laser that I'm hoping for. It's as as dumb as that sounds. So I'm probably a little bit more excited about the future. Cause I think, is- I think long-term the future is going to be the one boot that will still be like, I'm going to go to that when I'm not testing stuff out. Cause I'll find it really comfortable. That's fair. That's fair. And especially if you get now, I don't have it with me, but especially if you get the low cut future 19.1, mm-hmm. I think it's really, you know, it's really going to give you those OG hypervenom vibes as well. Yeah. Cause, cause, cause it, it's soft. It has that texture on the forefoot. So, so that for me could really work. I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm having a tough time, man. I'm having a really tough time because I love the Venoms. I'm probably going to replace the Mercurials with the with the Venoms, but I also love the future for what they give me. I'm probably going to go Venom, but uh-huh. but I could basically I could take either and be just as happy. Yeah. No. It's- but for me, I'm, a, I'm a, like a little bit disappointed because the Venom is basically just a hyper Venom. I mean, just call it what it is and be done mm-hmm. with it, and then give us the boot. But but in the end, it's a good product, and that's what matters at the end of the day. So, yeah. so, for me. So. Yeah, well, I don't think I don't think we I don't think it's realistic to expect a, a reinventing of the wheel with every new release anymore. But, but that's just, also like it's different enough. I think it's different enough, which is important. and I think that's something that that's something you should bring up in another podcast. Like, are we getting spoiled as as consumers? You know, we always expect new stuff. But but can we, you know, is does it even make sense to give it to us all the time? Because we expect new boot releases, new generation updates every six months. Well, yeah, the life cycles are getting... Well, I think with social media, I mean, obviously we play a part in, in promoting oh, the launching definitely. of a new product. Yeah, yeah. But they also can go direct to consumer now. Like if you look at the, these new Puma boots, I know the one is just a refresh, but uh-huh. the future, like those came out in June. 
I that's know. a six month life cycle on a top end product until we I get know. something new. That's that's like unheard of and, fast. And honestly, that to me is a little bit ridiculous. Like, because uh, yeah. you gotta spend two hundred more euros if you want the newest and the latest and greatest uh, yeah. to go on and, and get another future. And 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 down the line in the future, that might be a little too much. If you know what I mean. Well, if, if everyone, I said keeps future. Doing it, yeah, I know. I, got I, it. I said future. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're past that. We're past it, yeah. We've uh, we're basically used all our stupid we're past, we're, we're past the future now. Yeah. So we need to f- come up with some good puns on the Phantom Venom. That's 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 for another time. Phantom Venom or, or Venom. Because Nike, Ven- Nike does not like using vowels anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've noticed. Phantom Venom. Mm-hmm. Right? They cut out the vowels out of Venom. Pa- mm-hmm. pre- precision power. They cut out the O and the E. They're cutting out all the vowels now. <laughs> they did. Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah, something against vowels, those guys. So the next superfly will be the S P R F L Y. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Wait, My body no can't y. take Wait. it. Wait, can they use a Y? <laughs> Wait, I don't know if they can no, use a Y because no. that's no, they well, can't. A E Y O U and sometimes Y. No. Mercurials uh. and the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, much. Okay. Sort of Dude, this is this is getting this is getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> but but this I mean this has been this has been fun. It's basically one of the times I've had uh, where I've been able to talk boots for like I think like thirty five minutes now. Yeah, no, without anyone good. going like <laughs> at me every time I open my mouth. <laughs> so oh, thank you worry, for that's that. coming. That'll come in future episodes. Oh, probably yeah. I, I, um, I, that's when you know when you have a fellow boot nerd on the other on the other line, and 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 you talk so much shit that you still get the. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, so yeah. I, I guess I guess that's is that a wrap for episode one? Would you say? I think it's a wrap for episode one. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. So, I guess I guess from here we want some of your feedback. Um, this is on a new channel. Obviously, if you watch this and you made it to this point, you probably already subscribed. If you didn't subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get notified when the next new one goes live. But the feedback we need from you guys is, I guess, how often do you want to see this? If you have Uh any topic ideas, leave it down below in the comments. I Uh I don't know about you, Jay, but I was thinking maybe once a week, once every two weeks. Sounds good to me. I mean, I think it's going to be very dependent on what comes out. Obviously right now it's, it's pretty hectic. Yeah, and, and there's going to be plenty of stuff to talk about. So, so you know, and and even when there's not a podcast like like this, and and uh-huh. you know, I'm I'm going to be uh, be guesting you, whatever you call it. Um, there's still you know, there's still your channel, there's still Unisports channel, so people can kind of get their fix. Uh, yeah, elsewhere. you can absolutely uh, follow both of us. I think all I think we'll put all of our social media. Yeah, stuff it's going to be the on the screen. So basically, this is this is where you know uh, we can kind of go deeper into the all the nerdy tech stuff. Yeah, this is like, because I can't, as much as I would like to make like a, a one hour long review, which I totally could do. Oh, yeah. I'm, no. sure, I'm sure you could do it too, Jay, but nobody's going to sit there and watch that. No, this is exactly. more like, I guess, on the spot, real personal opinions, and, and, and I guess a breakdown and analysis of not just specific products, but the market in general. Just what's going on. Basically, what's popping through our minds as we uh, as we talk. Because again, I mean, I wanted to do this for I don't know how many years. So, so uh-huh. again, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for having me on the podcast. That's uh, that's really fun. It's nice yeah. to really have someone to talk boots to. Yeah, so, uh, I think so it's gonna I be good. I'm excited. I'm really yeah, excited. No, it's good. So, but, but guys, yeah, let us know. Uh, let us know what you want to see and how often and you know all that. Yeah. Click everything you can. Opinions, feedback. Leave it down below. Thank you so it's much for awesome. watching. Thank that you so much for watching. <laughs> Josh, and, I'll uh, talk to you later, man. Yeah, we'll see you. Episode two coming soon. Later. All right. Bye.